Hello, my name is Christopher, and today I'm going to show you how to secure your Cloudflare tunnels. So, I made a video over here on how to set up your Cloudflare tunnels, and I got a request over here to uh, show y'all how to secure your tunnels. So, this series is about creating a smart home from scratch. So, I'm going over installing hardware, uh, software to install in home automation, everything like that. So, it, if you like that, subscribe, comment, like. And let's get started. So I'm going to continue where I left off in the other tutorial. And I have my Cloudflare tunnel set up. And I'll link it down in the description on how to set that all up. Um, so now you're on the homepage of the Zero Trust. I'm going to go over to Access. And then I have adguard.bbtw.xyz set up in the tunnels over here already. I'm going to add an application to put a login in front of that tunnel. I'm going to go to self-hosted applications you host in your infrastructure that use Cloudflare's sort of DNS. So you will have to use Cloudflare's DNS to do this and you should be doing that if you set up the tunnel already. So I'm going to select that and then I'm going to type in an application name. So I'm going to just do AdGuard Home. We'll put the session duration at 24 hours. And then um, the application uh, domain, I'm going to do the same one that I have in the um, tunnel. And then you can add another domain if you'd like. I'm going to delete that one. Okay, now the application appearance. So we're going to turn on the app launcher later on, but, um, so you, you can, uh, set a different, a domain. You can also go with the default application logo. This will be on the app launcher pe page. So you can also do a custom logo as well. And then block pages, you can choose what the end user will see if they fail to authenticate. You can go with Cloudflare's default and put a message in yourself, or you can redirect to a URL of your choosing. I have just one identity provider, but uh, later on I'll show you how to add identity providers. So accept all av available identity providers. That means that you will accept all of them once they're here. Um, you can turn that on or off and then just select which one you want. Skip identity provider selection if only one is configured. So if you want to turn this on, this would skip the identity uh, the, the identity provider completely. If there's only one active. So I'm going to go down here to next. Then now I'm going to put in a policy name. If I can spell. Um, home and then policy. Okay. You're going to put the action is allow you can put the same as application set session timeout in the last page here's where you configure the rules so i'm going to do an emails here so on that one time pin you have to actually put in the emails that you accept on the one time pin because no matter what cloudflare will send try, uh, try, try to say that it's sending out an email and if it's not in here you won't get it so, I'm going to do cloudflare.youtube at emailcove.com. Then now you just press return or enter, and you have your email in there that is accepted with a one-time pin. You can also do exclude, require, and exclude. So you can ha have a require in here, like if I wanted to require the person to be in the United States, you can put that there. You can also exclude people with IP ranges, country, login methods. You can exclude emails. So it's pretty neat. You can do a, additional settings. The purpose a just, justification requires you to enter justification for any access to this application. So you can turn that on or off. You can re require the user to obtain a temporary access for author authorized approvers. So you can put your email down here and you can approve them to be in there. 
You can also do a prompt for purpose ju justification prompt. So you can also do that. Um, so I'm going to say next down here. And if you have cores uh, that you need to set up, you can set that up there. You can allow the credentials. You can set the control max age. You can allow the origins in, me methods, headers. And then if you want to control the cookies, you can access all requests for a valid cookie. And then, um, so you can do HTTP only, enable binding cookie, enforce cookie path attribute, lax or strict on the cookie. So you can also do additional settings. So enable automatic Cloudflare authentication. So you can turn that on or off and browser rendering. So SSH or VNC that is in beta. So be careful with that. Cloudflare will render an SSH terminal or VNC session for this application in a web browser. That's pretty neat. Um, so that is all here. So I'm going to say add application down here. And then now you have your application and it's now being guarded by um, Cloudflare's uh, multi-factor authentication. So I'm going to go over here and you'll see that it does this for some reason, unable to find your app access application, but you'll refresh. So you'll have to give it just a second for it to propagate through Cloudflare's network. So once that happens, um, you're going to go to the ad guard and you'll see this here, get a login code e emailed to you. So, um, this is actually, uh, on bbtw testingcloudflareaccesscom So it's actually a proxy in front of it. So now I'm going to type in that allowed email address. Then you should get a email sent to you. Okay, now it's always going to show this screen even if the email didn't go through correctly. So I'm going to go over to um, my, my email system and you'll see login code for adguard.bbtw. So here you go, you have your login code. And I'm going to um, to copy this. So now you can copy and paste that code in here, enter code. And then once you sign in, it should redirect you to your AdGuard instance. So that's how to use your one-time pin code and get it working. So now I'm going to show you how to put a icon on an application. So I'm going to go over to access, turn from the home page. I'm going to go over to the application. We'll go to the configure and then overview up here. And I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to say custom on the application logo. I'm going to paste in the favicon that I have on the ad guard side. And then, um, so now we're going to go down and save application. And now you have a logo inside your application. So now we're going to, um, turn on the app launcher to where you can keep track of all your apps in the handy website that Cloudflare allows you to have. So I'm going to go to settings right here. I'm going to go to authentication. Then you're going to see app launcher right here. <clears throat> I'm going to say manage. Then I'm going to um, go to, to, uh, to where you can add a rule. So I'm going to, to type in a rule. So app So I'm going to do emails, Cloudflare, YouTube, email cove. If I can spell. Okay, email cove. Okay, so cloudflare.emailcove. So this is going to allow email addresses that match this into the app launcher. So I'm going to save right here. 
And then we have one policy set. We can go over to authentication and you can see accept all entity providers. And I have only one entity provider on a one time pin. So you can also set the session duration of how long the user can uh, stay signed in. And I'm going to press save. Okay, now if we go over to the app launcher, so but before we got this and we just set up the app launcher, so I'm going to refresh this and you can see now we're, we're signed in. So you, uh, you, you'll just go to your uh, bbtw-testing, uh, whatever you have right, right there, or, or place that with what, whatever you have in there, and then cloudflareaccess.com. So this will be your main dashboard, and you can easily click this and go to your, your apps. It's really neat. You can go up here, and you can log out. And then whenever you go to this dashboard, you can log in so I'm gonna log in again okay now I'm gonna say send me code and then I'm gonna go over to my email and then I have another email coming through so I'm gonna get that code right there I'm gonna go back over to my sign in then I'm going to paste that code in and then sign in. Okay, now you're signing into your dashboard and you can easily search the apps. You can go to your apps anytime you want. Also, um, how you add apps to the app launcher is you go into your applications. When, when you add an application, you're going to go into overview right here. Then you're going to go to application appearance right here and enable app in app launcher. So you can turn that off and you, on. And, and if you turn it off, it won't show in the app launcher. If you turn it on, it will. So every time we add an application, we have to set up the policies. Wouldn't it be nice to have a group to where you can always have the same policies on uh, different applications? So Cloudflare does have this. It's called Access Groups right here. And I'm going to add a group right here. I'm going to just say Testing policy okay now you can set the group as default so this will be automatically added on anything new like an application so i'm going to set it as default and then you can go down here you can set your uh your include so i'm going to do cloudflare.youtube.com okay now i'm going to set that email address and you go down here to save right here and okay, now the testing policy has been created. So now when we go over here to applications, we can go to configure. Okay, now we have a policy right here that we had to mainly put stuff in. So we, we had to mainly put things in here. I'm gonna take this out completely. And then I'm gonna go over here to assign a group. So I'm gonna assign that group to this. You can also set, say if it's include, require, exclude. Okay, so I'm going to save policy down here. And then now we have one include, which is that email address that's assigned to the access group. So now if you go back in here, you'll see that the testing policy has been assigned. And these are the includes that are in the policy. So and then now, if you go ahead and you add an application, you can add the group. And if you set it as default, it'll already be added. So that saves you some time and you not to have to recreate the policies over and over. So now you have um, the login one-time pin for Cloudflare. So I'm going to go over to settings and then I'm gonna add another login method so add one, you can Azure, Facebook, Google Workplaces, LinkedIn, One Login, OpenID Connect, SAML, Centrify, uh, GitHub, Google, Okta, and Ping One, and Yandex. So one-time pin is already added because that's Cloudflare's default. 
So now you can go in here, you can go to GitHub, and it will ask you to uh, set up a GitHub access. So it puts the instructions in here of how to do it. So, and then once you do this, you will put the email address that you have on your GitHub account inside of the policy or the access group that you created. And then it will allow this login group inside of that, uh, the dashboard or the, the, app, the app launcher or your applications, a dashboard. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, add GitHub to this and show you how it works. So I'm gonna show you how to add uh, GitHub to the, um, the, Cl the Cloudflare login methods. So you're gonna go to your profile up here. You're gonna go to settings and then developer settings and then OAuth apps right here. You're gonna say new OAuth app right here. And you're gonna put it in. I'm gonna say testing. And then you're gonna go back here and you're going to, um, for example, your team domain, you're gonna copy this. And then I'm gonna go back to there and the homepage and I'm going to, you're gonna put your name in here, but I'm gonna put my name. This is just a Cloudflare testing account, so. And then you're going to put that same thing in there. So I'm going to copy this one, the callback, and I'm gonna put it inside the authorization callback right here. And BBTW. And then there you go. That's the callback flow. And then you're going to copy the client ID and the client secret into here. So I'm gonna do that now. Uh, don't worry, this this uh, OAuth app will be deleted, so. Okay, register. So now we're going to go in here. We're gonna copy the client ID. Then we're going to get a Okay, secret. once you get the secret here, you're gonna just copy this and you're gonna put it in the secret, and then there you go, and then you're gonna press save. And then now, it says that you've ac uh, you've successfully set it up, so you can go here to finish setup, then now your success is is now set up, identity provider. So now, so now you have successfully uh, set up your identity. Over here, you can see that GitHub has now been uh, set up. You can go test it right here just to make sure it's working. But I'm gonna go back to the app launcher. I'm gonna log out real quick. Then I'm gonna log in and then you'll see your identity provider up here, GitHub. So you can just, and the, the account does not have access. So while the account does not have access is you haven't added it to your access group yet. So you can just add your email, your your GitHub email to here, and then press save. And then now you should be able to sign in with your GitHub. So that is step-by-step step on how to add Cloudflare access in the beginning of your uh, local domains. This makes it to where uh, you can easily add your tunnels, put authentication on it. Even if your applications have authentication, it's always better to have another authentication on top of it. This makes it to where you, they also can't see that domain that that's going to go to eventually too. Uh, so this makes it really easy to, uh, to secure your tunnels. And uh, if you haven't already, subscribe, comment, like, and also suggest more tutorials down below in the comment section, or you can join the Big Bear community and you can suggest them in there. Uh, so I'll link that down in the description so you can do that. And see you next time. Stay tuned for more tutorials.